Hey everybody, I sat on this video for a long time because I knew that I could make some thumbnails that were total clickbait, like this one, or this one, and I didn't want to do that, so I settled on this one, the one you clicked on. The other reason I sat on the video is just uh, pure integrity. I didn't want to just throw out something that was going to go viral just to like get a bunch of views on YouTube. I wanted to focus on something, and that's something being safety. So yes, I'll show you the video, I'll show you what happened, I'll show you a couple pictures that I took afterwards, um, just because I wanted to document it for myself. But this video's main focus is going to be on safety. I'm not going to go over every single tool in the workshop and the safety aspects of each one, but what I am going to do is cover some main components. Things like situational awareness, personal protective equipment, and I'm also going to share my favorite YouTuber whose focus is on instruction and safety. If you haven't discovered him yet, then you should watch all his videos because he's fantastic. Okay, let's talk for a second about PPE, personal protective equipment. First, let's talk about eye protection. You only have two eyes, and when they're gone, they're gone. Robot eyes might be available in the future, but guess what? They're not right now. I have tons of eye protection that I've collected over the years. I have a lot of sunglasses that I use for working outside. I have, uh, of course, clear for working in the shop. Um, these ones even have a little padding so nothing gets in around the edges. Um, these are my current favorite. What I would recommend is go to the hardware store and get three different pairs of different types. Then you can try each one on, try them while you're working, and then you'll find your favorite, and then you can buy five of those. Now let's talk about ear protection. Ear protection comes in all different shapes and sizes. What? You have the big ones that go all the way around the ear, like this. That's my personal favorite because I like the full coverage. I have friends who have the little inserts. Cool too if it works for you. I must have odd shaped ears because those inserts never worked for me, but that's fine too. Um, point is, use ear protection. A lot of people skimp on the ear protection, but I can tell you as somebody who's 40 plus years old and who's been to a lot of concerts that ear protection is extremely important. Okay, last thing on the PPE list today is gloves. Sometimes in the shop I don't use gloves because um, I like the tactile feel, but a lot of times I do. If something has a lot of splinters, is really rough, nails, always use gloves with nails. Another time I always use gloves is for staining and finishing. Now I usually don't use a thick glove like this, I'll use those little nitrile gloves or gardening gloves or something like that, but the chemicals in the finish and getting stain on your hands, it's just smart to use gloves. Now speaking of staining and finishing, I have a bonus PPE for you, and that is a mask. Now give me one good reason why you would want to inhale those chemicals, unless you're just trying to lose brain cells. Okay, let's talk about situational awareness. I want you to stop and think for a second what does situational awareness mean to you? Because it could mean many different things. Now to me, it does mean many different things. It means what's going on around me, of course, but it also means what's going on in the rest of my life that I might be distracted about. What's going on in the hallway? What's going on in the other room that I might have to think about? Is someone gonna come in the room and startle me while I'm using the saw? Now here's the perfect example of situational awareness while you're working. Oftentimes I'll be using a bandsaw and a sander at the same time, going back and forth between the two. Make a little cut, sand something, and then make a little, another little cut and sand that. And sometimes, just for convenience sake, I'll leave both of them running. What happens is, if I'm sanding something for a little while, I might forget that that bandsaw is running, and when I go back over to it, I might get dangerously close to that blade because I'm moving things around and setting up my cut and I forgot that it was running. One last aspect of situational awareness that I'll touch on real quick is multiple people in the shop doing multiple things. You really have to know what each of you are doing. For example, let's say somebody is making a cut on the table saw and somebody else is about eight feet away doing some hand sanding. 
Well, that person who's eight feet away doing the hand sanding needs to wear PPE also, safety goggles and ear protection, because that off cut from what's being cut on the table saw can easily fly back towards the person who's hand sanding. So they need to know what's going on. One last thing on the safety piece in this video, I wanted to share one of my favorite resources on YouTube, and that is Stumpy Nubs. There's tons of great YouTubers out there doing really cool things in all sorts of artwork and woodworking. Stumpy is my favorite when it comes to safety tutorials, but it doesn't just stop there. He does tutorials on wood movement and joinery and all sorts of things like that. Um, check out Stumpy Nubs. Also, if you have a YouTuber who you really like that focuses on safety, put a link to him or her in the comments. Okay, now let's get back to why you originally clicked on this video, and that's how I got a nail in my nose. I was making a three foot long sunburst, and I had just finished gluing and nailing on the rays. And I was cutting a flush straight edge on the bottom of the sunburst to put the bottom frame piece on when this happened. So I felt something hit my face, and I didn't know what it was. I just kind of assumed it was a wood chip, so I finished the cut. And so I went to brush off the wood chip and realized that there was something kind of stuck on there. And so I went into the bathroom to look in the mirror and realized it was shiny. <laughs> I thought, oh, a little piece of the nail must have come and hit me in the face. So I start to pull it out, and it won't pull out. And I'm thinking, okay, it's kind of deep. So I get a pair of pliers, and I'm like, okay, it's, I'm just going to have to do this fast. And so I yanked it out, and it was probably at least a centimeter long inside of my nose. And of course it was bleeding. So I pinched my nose really, 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 really tight to stop the bleeding for at least a solid five minutes, and it worked. And it just kind of stopped the bleeding, and everything closed up. So that was six months ago, and really, there might be a little scar there, but I am so incredibly lucky and smart because I was wearing my PPE. I had my glasses on and my ear protection, and if that nail would have just been an inch and a half higher, I may have lost sight in my right eye. But I was wearing my eye protection. So everyone, please, you should too, so we can all keep doing this for years to come.